Hey guys, welcome to Oxman Garage. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to ship cylinder heads. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Uh, in today's video, we're going to go over uh, shipping uh, cylinder heads in the mail. So, uh, why are you shipping a cylinder head? Are you having it uh, CNC ported, ported? Uh, are you getting a valve job done? Are you having repairs done to your cylinder head? And you have to ship it out to a company to uh, have uh, services done to your cylinder head. So I'm going to show you step-by-step uh, -step on how to ship a big heavy cylinder head. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get a box, okay? So this is a box that I'm going to be shipping my cylinder heads in. And this is a, a box that's a little bit uh, bigger than a cylinder head because you want space inside the box to put packing material in to protect the cylinder head. And also, this is a double wall box. So this has two layers of cardboard to give more of a sturdy rigidness to the box to protect the cylinder head. Just to show you the difference between a double wall and a single wall cardboard box, so this right here is a double wall. As you can see, you have two layers of cardboard sandwiched together. It gives it more strength. And this is your typical Amazon box. You can tell that this is just a single wall. All right, so next I'm going to show you some packing materials that you want to protect your cylinder head. So I'll show you this towards the end, but you want to put the deck of the cylinder head, you want to put a piece of cardboard on and you want to tape it around the cylinder head so that you're protecting the, uh, the face of the cylinder head where the valves are. You want to protect that deck. You don't want any nicks. You don't want it to get bumped or uh, damaged uh, during shipping. And I'll show you this in a second. So the other things you got that you can um, pack around the cylinder head is craft paper. So you can get craft paper just about anywhere. You can get it at your local hardware store. And what you're going to do is you're going to rip off a piece and you're going to crumple it up. And you're going to cocoon around the cylinder head to protect it. Another great option is the Instapack or Sealed Air uh, Expanding Foam. You can buy these on Amazon and I'll put a link in the description of where you can find these. And what you're going to do is you're going to get the packs in the mail and there's going to be a little pack inside of this bag and you're going you're gonna to smack it and it's going to break and you want to go back and forth with it and it's going to be this expanding foam and you can put this expanding foam around your cylinder head to protect it as well. Before you put your cylinder head in the box, a nice thing you should do is you should wrap it and like a garbage bag or some kind of um, uh, seal the plastic to uh, protect it from moisture from getting in or just to just to keep it sealed shut so you would put your cylinder head in this bag and then and then you want to tie off the end so it's nice and sealed and lastly is saran wrap I like to use saran wrap after I put the after I put this on the cylinder head deck I then like to wrap the cylinder head just to keep everything tight and keeping this on the cylinder face and I'll show you that in a second. All right, so before you ship your cylinder head, you like I said before, you want to protect the uh the deck of the cylinder head, the combustion chamber side because this is the part that's mounting to the block and we want this to be damage free, we want it to be nice and straight. So what I like to do is I like to get a piece of cardboard, thick cardboard. And this is actually a gasket. Um, the gasket came in this and it's nice and thick. It's like nice and thick and it's going to go on there. So what I like to do is I put this right on the face and I have some duct tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the duct tape on the sides here just to keep it on there. And now I'm protecting 
the face of the cylinder head. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my saran wrap and I'm going to saran wrap the whole cylinder head just to keep this on here and just kind of protect anything from getting inside here on the, um, the on the valve side, the valve spring side. All right, so I got my saran wrap right here and what we're going to do is we're going to start wrapping the cylinder head. So I'm going to start turning it around just to start the wrap. So once you got a few wraps on it, you just want to stand it upright if you can. I also have a swiveling chair, one of these uh, one of these swiveling chairs right here. And what I like to do too is rest it up on top of here and then get my saran wrap and start spinning my swiveling chair. So if you have a swiveling chair, you can kind of use it to your advantage and wrap it better that way. But just here on the table, I'm just gonna start wrapping the cylinder with the saran wrap all the way around. And I'm gonna do this about 20 times just to get a nice good wrap on here so that you're protecting the uh, the valves uh, the valve spring side and to make sure that this cardboard isn't going anywhere on the combustion chamber side. All right, so once you get your cylinder head completely saran wrapped and nice and tight, you then want to get your box ready. And uh, just to go back on the box again, where can you find a good cylinder head box? And you can check out your local FedEx or UPS store. They sell boxes. Uh, you can go online. Amazon sells uh, good double wall boxes to uh, support the weight of a cylinder head. So just go online, do a good Google search, and uh, try and find a good box. Another alternative is you can go to any department store or any store, and in the back of the store there would be a cardboard uh, dumpster. Make sure you get the permission of the owner first before you start going through their dumpster. Uh, and you might get lucky and find a double wall, a uh, nice uh, uh, cardboard box to ship your cylinder head. So before we put the cylinder head in the box, like I mentioned before, you wanna put this uh, plastic, you wanna put this plastic um, on the cylinder head now. What you wanna do is just stand it upright, put the plastic on. all the way down kind of feed the weight through feed this through and then you just want to tie it at the end and put a put a zip tie or a tie in it okay all right so once that's done you want to put your packing material on the bottom of the box and I'm going to be using the insta foam and this has already been preformed so then that's on the bottom of the box now. And now I'm gonna be putting the cylinder head in the box. Okay. So now we got the cylinder head in the box. So the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I wanna be putting my packing material on all sides of the cylinder head now because we wanna completely cocoon the cylinder head and protect it. So I'm going to be using the Insta foam and going on all sides. You can use the craft paper. If you get the craft paper, you want to be using a lot of it. And when you get all, and you're using a lot of it, you're really crumpling it down and you want it nice and tight. The tighter that the paper is, the more uh, protective that it'll be with the cylinder head and the wall of the box. All right, so now we got this thing completely packed, uh, nice and tight with the Insta Foam. Uh, once you have it completely cocooned, we now want to uh, close the box up and we want to use a good tape. So I'm going to show you a good tape that I like to use. So this is the shipping tape that I like to use. This is the Duck HP 260 high performance tape. This is a 3.1 mil thickness good shipping tape that I've been using for a few years now, shipping car parts, anything heavy, 
just getting a nice, good, uh, sticky tape that's going to seal up a box. So I like to use this tape uh, for shipping or anything just to use around the house as well. It's a good quality tape. This is the Duck HB260, and I'll put a link in the description on Amazon where to find this. All right, so now we're going to close up the box. Okay, so we're going to do both ends and then the long flaps. Now, sometimes with these big heavy boxes, you can use staples too, but just in this video, we're just gonna focus on tape. And this is a really good tape. It's gonna hold the box together. You wanna make sure that both ends are kind of squeezed together so that it seals. Okay, then you wanna get the ends right here. All right, so I like to go a little bit overboard and I'm not gonna use up all my tape because this is just, you know, a uh, demonstration. But I like to, if I'm, if I'm gonna ship my cylinder head and have it serviced and um, CNC ported or whatnot, I wanna make sure that this thing is gonna get there and uh, the tape is gonna hold. So I like to take this tape and go around it like I did with the saran wrap and do multiple passes going around it. All right, so the next thing you want to do is you want to get the dimensions of the box and you want to weigh it. So you can get a bathroom scale or you can get one of these nice scales at on Amazon. And this is called a smart weigh scale. I'll put a link in the description of where you can find this. So next we want to weigh the box. All right, so this box is 36 pounds and 10 ounces. So I like to write that on the box so I don't forget. And then next we wanna get the dimensions. We wanna get the length, the height, and the width. And this is 24 by 13 by 12. So I usually put it right there where I'm gonna put my shipping label. So next thing you wanna do is you wanna get your smartphone out or go on a computer with internet and you wanna to go to fedex.com, you wanna to go to ups.com and find out who would have the best price for shipping a box like this. And for me, typically it's gonna be those two shipping companies. I would never really ship with uh, the post office because that's, it's gonna be tremendously more uh, to ship with them. So check out FedEx or UPS to ship a heavy box like this. So once you, once you uh, purchased your label, you can print the label out on your computer. And from there you can print it out and put your label on your box and you can use some tape and tape it that way, or you can get a shipping sleeve. And a shipping sleeve is where you put the label in the sleeve and it's a protective plastic barrier which is going to keep water and moisture away from your shipping label and you can put that on your box and it's got a sticky adhesive on the back so it'll stick right to the box and i like to go a little bit overboard i went on amazon i bought these fragile stickers and i usually like to put the fragile stickers all over the box so uh, get your get your label put it on the box you can drop it off at your FedEx or UPS store, or you could have them come and pick it up. Um, usually it's faster just to get it at the store as soon as possible if you're looking to get it out fast. All right, so another thing about labels too is when you get the label and you get your receipt after you had paid for it, you're going to get on the label, you're gonna have the tracking number that's on the bottom right there. So you're gonna have the tracking number, and you want to take this tracking number and you want to plug it into the website uh, where you purchase the label. So if it's UPS, FedEx, or the post office, you want to use this tracking number and you're going to plug it into their website to track uh, your box when it gets to its destination. All right, guys, this is going to wrap up this video. Um, a lot of this stuff is this common sense stuff, right? If you're gonna ship car parts or if you're gonna ship anything in a box, you wanna pack it up nice and tight. You wanna make sure that it's protected. But 
Uh, a lot of guys don't know a lot about this stuff, like the Insta Pack that's out there with the expanding foam and some of the nice and some of the nice ways that you can protect uh, any kind of car part or any kind of uh, cylinder head that goes out there in the mail. So, if you guys like this video, make sure you like and subscribe. If you have any comments, questions, make sure you comment below. Again, this is Josh with Oxman Garage.